Michigan State got its first win under interim coach Harlan Barnett on Saturday, hanging on to top Nebraska 20 to 17. Defense was great. They forced three turnovers, had seven sacks, avoided mistakes themselves, did not turn it over. Two different QBs threw touchdown passes. 20 to 17 again, the final as MSU gets win number three on the season, which gets us to this week's edition of Coach Speak. We are joined by the interim coach of the Spartans, Harlan Barnett. Coach, great to have you with us. Uh, look, it has been a rough couple of months for Michigan State. Anyone who's watching the Big Ten Network is surely aware of that. What did it mean to you to be able to celebrate a win with those guys? It, it meant a whole lot, uh, Dave. Um, you know, I've been you know, hoping these guys could get a win, the guys could get a win. And then it got to a point, because I, I kept saying, I want the guys to get a win. Then it got to a point where I needed a win, you know, <laughs> that we all needed a win. And so um, we went out and fought, and, and uh, our guys did a great job. We talked to them about finishing, because that's what we weren't doing. Uh, we, we've been playing very competitive football uh, in a lot of our games. We just weren't finishing. And we finally finished the game and got a victory, and uh, it was an awesome feeling afterwards. What's been the message to this team as you've gone through this? I mean, this is an unusual year, to say the least. I, I think years like this, there just isn't a roadmap for it. So what do you say as a coach when you have, in, in the parlance of football, you have sudden change? Man, so, so when it first happened, the first team meeting, I said, what we have to do is stay unified. That's, that's, that's how we have to do it. We have to stay unified, and everybody has to be pulling a rope from the same end. We can't be playing tug of war in our own building. And so uh, that's the first, that was my fr main focus initially. And then after that, you know, we just kept doing what we were doing. Our, 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 you know, a lot of, we're real routinized as coaches and as players. And so we kept a lot of, a lot of the same things going as far as morning practice and some things. Changed a, a few little things, but not a whole lot uh, because we're – Again, we're so routinized in what we do. The practice schedule is fine, the time and all that stuff. And so it was just about staying together, working hard, and giving our best. And, and that's what our guys have been doing. Such a weird spot for you, obviously. You have incredibly deep ties to this program, as many people probably know. But again, you were an All-American player at Michigan State for George Perlis. You've been on the staff on a couple of, of different occasions. You met your wife there. Your kids went there. I mean, you bleed Spartan Green, and, and I'm sure, kind of in the back of your mind, be like, man, it'd be great to be the head coach of Michigan State someday, but to take over in the most unusual circumstances, what has this been like for you personally? Very, a whirlwind. Um, when we first start going, so my, my mindset, Dave, is always just, okay, I'm putting a position, let's go. No excuses, let's go win games. And uh, it was in the, during the bye week, uh, Coach D'Antonio called me one night in the middle of the bye week, and he said, just think about what, what you've been doing the last several weeks and what happened. He said, it's not like you got hired in you know, the end of November, December, January, where you had to go through a spring ball, a, a fall camp, and set your culture and start a season. You're already in the midst of a season and trying to get guys to play hard and, 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 and execute and with uh, you know the staff and everybody just moving in the same direction. And I just hadn't had a chance to think about that. And I, I, thought, I slowed down a little bit. I said, yeah, you're right. But then that was only a week. And then we right back into <laughs> it. So it probably won't even hit me until we're done. Uh, like sometime in January or something where I can sit back and think on it and say, wow, that was that, that was a <laughs> that was wild ride. But it is what it is. No excuses. Like you said, I am a Spartan. So I'm here to you know try to help our guys uh, win uh, to the best of my ability and the coaching staff's ability. And, and, and they're working hard. I mean, if you watch every one of our games, our guys are playing hard. Uh, they're giving great effort. And like I said, it was just about finishing, no, you know, cut down on the penalties and, uh, and, and uh, you know, and the turnovers and do things like that. So our guys have been doing that. And uh, hopefully we can keep it going here in the month of November. Hey, hey Coach, uh, yeah, you and I have a lot of coaching crossovers. Mark D'Antonio, Cincinnati, then Michigan State, then Coach Perlis. He was kind of a mentor to me when I first started. Uh, I'm just curious about the recruiting, how you're doing with that, because nobody knows about how players win games for you better than you do. I remember the no-fly zone, right? I'm going to make sure. Waynes, uh, Drummond, Denard, I mean, that was you. And, and they were as talented a secondary, really, as there was at that time in, in football because I was remember studying it. Uh, you know, how is recruiting going? Are you able to kind of keep that going and keep it in place? 
It, it's going well. I mean, it's going as good as it, as it can go. I mean, with the uncertainty that's going on up here. Um, and so I just been talking, you know, we have some guys that still have, are hanging around with us. We have some guys that have decommitted. Um, and, and if I'm just being totally honest, uh, some have said, hey, you there, we're there. Like even the kids that have decommitted. And so we just keep going after it and letting them know that we're, you know, Michigan State's a great place. Uh, if we're here or not, and, you know, me, I'm definitely going to say that. And so because uh, I believe in the program, I believe in the people up here in the university. And so um, we just continue to, 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 to sell what Michigan State has, uh, regardless of what, what the outcome may be uh, within the you know, next few weeks or a month or whatever it may be. And so uh, it's, a, it's a great place. Um, you can't go wrong coming here to Michigan State University. And, uh, and uh, hopefully I'm, I'm the one here uh, that they can uh, play play for and, uh, and, and give us a, a great opportunity to win championships. Yeah, that, that would be fantastic. I'm going to tell you, a couple, I'm going to bring a couple of topics up here to put a smile on your face, okay? You do, this is a week to get a smile, okay? I, yes. when, when I left University of Miami, you know, we were running a 4-3 defense, just like George always ran at the Steelers and you guys did there. So he flew me up to Michigan State to talk defense with his coaches. And so we get through that, and I was so excited because with Nick Saban and company, uh, you know, we're on the staff. So I was looking forward to uh, talking football to the late hours of the night with these guys when George wasn't there. And sure enough, he, the meeting's over, and he says, come on, you're coming with me. I said, Coach, where are we going? He says, I get an alumni function. You're coming with me. You're going to be – he takes me to an alumni function. Next thing you know, I'm shaking hands. I'm talking to, you know, Spartan alums. We're trying to raise some money, bring enthusiasm. So we had a – now, obviously, we had a few pops later, and then we went and we had something to eat. So I go back to, to uh, Dallas, and Jimmy said, hey, how was that trip up? To, oh, I says, George Perlis is unbelievable. It was the great – so now, fast forward, and we're getting ready for the draft in 91. And we used to all go in a posse on Jerry's jet. You know, me, Jimmy, there were about three of us, and we bounced from school to school. You remember the story. So now I'm excited about Dixon Edwards. And I think off this team at Michigan State, I think they had six, seven guys drafted that year. You can check, 91. So Jimmy says, you know what? You had so much fun. I want to go to Michigan State. So we get the jet and we fly and we're, we're going to stop there, see George and everybody, work them out and go to the next stop. No, 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 not with George. George says, I've already got it set up. We're going to my basement with your coaches and my coaches. I've got f – coach, we spent the night there. We were there. It, it, it was one – and we were howling. And we, to this day, Jimmy Johnson and the crew, we talk about the trip to Michigan State where we were in Georgia. You've been to that basement, right? you got a bar, oh, yeah. bar about as length as this studio. And it, we talked football, and it was just fantastic. So, And Dixon Edwards started for us. We drafted him. He started in the Super Bowl for us as a rookie. There you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I was Dixon's host. I'm a year older than Dixon. Uh, we're both from Cincinnati, Ohio. And so um, uh, Dixon and I hosted him here, and, and he came here, undersized linebacker out of high school, but would knock your head off and could run. And so uh, – uh, that's, that's a great story. That's a great story. <laughs> of course, everybody knows about the great teams you guys have down in Dallas. And Coach Perlis, uh, there's a lot of Coach Perlis stories now. Uh, matter of fact, Coach Hawkins and I were just talking today about some of his sayings, and we were laughing and, and talking about how we still use them. We've been using them to this day with our players. Coach, I want to turn the focus back to your team. A couple questions before we let you go. Tell me what's going on uh, quarterback-wise. You, you've used three different quarterbacks. Sam Levitt's now up against the, the red shirt number, right? He's played in four games. He certainly has played well for you at times. What's kind of the calculus here as you think about a strategy with your quarterbacks going forward these last few games and, and if you can win them all, potentially going into the postseason? Well, Kane Hauser is our starting quarterback. Um, Sam, like you said, is, is up against it as far as the red shirt thing is concerned. We want to not only – uh, do what's best for the team, want to do what's best for the individual player as well. And so we're still kind of talking it through, Dave, if I'm being totally honest with you, uh, as far as this week is concerned. Um, obviously, if, if something happened to Caden, uh, then we he, Sam is in, and he's all in for it, to, you know, to, to play and, and be the guy. Um, but right now, we're going to we're gonna move forward with uh, Caden, and if we can, you know, get Sam back in there to, to you know, work a little magic like he has done in a few games for us. 
he's willing to do that. And so we'll see how it goes moving forward uh, with this weekend and see where everything leads. But right now, Caden Howard is our starting quarterback. Hey, Coach, one quick one. Uh, I mentioned his name but didn't ask him about Mark D'Antonio. Mark and I have been friends since Cincinnati days. What's Mark actually – what kind of – you guys communicate daily? Is he there daily? Kind of, what's his role and, and how has he been involved with you this year? He, he's here daily. Uh, he's definitely here daily. Um, and he's always just saying little things, giving me little nuggets. He'll write some notes and give them to me. I, I have them up in my – pinned up on here in my office right now of things that we might have done in the past that he's done in the past. And um, just understanding the delicacy of, you know, me, you know, being elevated to the to the head coach position from the defensive back coach position. And, you know, this because these guys were peers and they still are peers of mine. And so I, I'm just trying to just navigate that as well as, you know, get the best out of the team. And so um, he, he gives me little nuggets all the time. And I love it. I, I, you know, I, I don't know what I would do without him being here. So really fired up that he's here with us. I love Coach D'Antonio. We were together for 14 straight years. And so um, Cincinnati for three years and 11 years here at Michigan State. And so that's, that's, a, that's a big brother to me. Uh, that's how I look at Coach D'Antonio. Harlan Barnett, this was a lot of fun. Congratulations on the win. Best of luck going forward, starting with the Buckeyes on Saturday and really appreciated your time today. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you very much.